Kitchen and a new episode of What's for Dinner. This is a special request. Uh, I have a viewer and her channel name is Trey and Abby's Mom. It's T-R-E-A-N-D-A-B-B-Y-S-M-O-M. -M. Trey and Abby's Mom. And she asked me if I could show her how to make Chinese pot stickers. They're really easy and you're not really going to believe how easy they are. Now they're really versatile because you're going to need Definitely you're going to need wonton wrappers that you buy in the produce section of your grocery store or you can also use the Goyoza or pot sticker wrappers which are round. I found the pot sticker wrappers today which are square. Either one will work, it doesn't matter. It all tastes the same, just different shape. Now you can also use this for steamed dumplings, pot stickers, or you can use it for Goyoza, you could use it for um, wontons, for wonton soup or you can use it for fried wontons if you like that too. I don't like to fry, you all know that, so I'm not going to do that. But today we're going to use it and we're going to make some pot stickers and we're going to make some wontons that I'm going to throw in my Asian chicken soup that I have back here. And um, the rest of them we're going to freeze and we're going to put them in a Ziploc bag and use them for later. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing you're obviously going to need is a package of wonton wraps. And these are always going to be either three inches square or about four inches round. Um, these have, I should probably open this up for you so you can see what it looks like. Let's see. Let me grab the scissors, sweetheart. can see what these look like. There's a bunch in here. There's probably 70 or so in here. Just like that. And that's probably how I want them because they're easy to grab. Okay. I'm going to go let Sophie in really quick. Come on. And my kitchen smells so good because I got this Asian chicken soup on the back burner and it's just so fragrant. So, okay. Wonton wrappers. And I have some Napa cabbage here that um, I had salted to render all the water out of it. We're going to squeeze the water out of that before we put it in our meat mixture. I've got about a half a cup of very finely chopped mushrooms, one green onion, white and green part that I have sliced, about two cloves of garlic that is finely minced, and about a teaspoon or so of finely grated ginger. I'm also going to make uh, a dipping sauce and we'll go over that later, but we're going to use in the dip, we're also going to use in here some sesame oil and some soy sauce or shoyu, however you say it. Um, the dipping sauce is going to have both of those items in it as well as rice wine vinegar, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of um, sweet and sour sauce of all things, but um, let's Let's get this moving. And I have a pound of ground pork. So, we're just going to switch sides. I'm going to move my wonton wrappers out of the way. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this cabbage. You can see when you put, I put about, this is about after, you know when you chop up cabbage, I need about a half a cup. If I had to measure it, of shredded Napa cabbage and I put about a teaspoon of salt on it and all of the water it's just been sitting for about 15 minutes and you're gonna want to squeeze it and just toss it right in there if you don't squeeze it if you cannot put the fresh cabbage in here because if you do it's gonna make it all watery and then when you cook your um, your pot stickers they're not gonna come out right so what did you do to that did you, did you explain that I did Okay. I shredded it when it was fresh, I put it in the bowl, I sprinkled it with a teaspoon or so of salt, and I mixed it up, and I let it sit. And that, in that time, it slumped, and all of the water started to render out of the cabbage. Then I just squeezed it out very tightly in my hand, and I just put it in the meat mixture. Now we're going to go ahead and add our mushroom, our garlic, our ginger, green onion, Molly's over here huffing the garlic. Some soy sauce. And a little bit of sesame oil. The sesame oil is extremely potent. You don't want to use a whole lot. A little bit goes a long way. 
Then get your hands in here. Hmm. Oh, Molly, huh? come up in this cupboard and get me the, the cornstarch. I forgot to get that down. We should do a little music over on this. You know, overdub the music. Why? <laughs> Why? It doesn't sound, it doesn't sound nice. Cornstarch? Cornstarch. It's in that white, the yellow square container. Okay. You see it? I can smell it. Excuse me. The sesame. You can smell everything. The sesame oil, the garlic, and Molly need to come over here. Okay. Open it up and put about a teaspoon or so in here. And I'll mix it in. The cornstarch is going to help the meat mixture just, it's going to help it come together and it's going to help it stay together. Um, it's not going to affect its flavor in any way. And you can leave it out if you like, but the cornstarch is going to ensure. That's it. Well, you need to put another one because that was like a quarter of a teaspoon. That's good. So we've put a half a teaspoon of cornstarch in here. It's just going to ensure that when you make your pot stickers, they're not going to get all soggy and a whole bunch of water isn't going to cook out of them. Okay, now. It smells so good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wash my hands. Can I stir it? You can stir that, sure. And you can turn it down. Put it on a three or a four there, sweetheart. It's simmering just nicely. Okay, dry my hands. All right, now what I want to do is clear over here and then figure out where's the best place for it to stand because I need to set up a cookie sheet, put my pot stickers on. Okay. Over here, then. Just, making what? Making something good? <laughs> yeah, she says, mm. Mama gave me some meat and I liked it. <laughs> Whoops. Alright, now, there's that. I wonder. We're going to just use a little bit of filling in each pot sticker. So, I'm going to try and use a scoop and see how that works for me. That's not the one I want. There's the one I want. That. You see that? That's about how much you want. You don't want any more because it won't, um, So we're going to take a, pot, um, egg, uh, a wonton wrapper and we're going to take that little piece of meat that we, you want to press out as much air as possible. Okay. These are our wontons. Okay. When you make a wonton. That's what they look like, just like that. Ta-da, that's a wonton. That's easy. I'm gonna make We're another one. Pasta. Hmm? What? We're doing pasta. We're doing wontons also, because I'm gonna put the wontons in my soup. Squeeze as much air as possible. Here, is that better? I want everybody to see. Tally, you're funny. Mm -hmm. Noisy girl. Okay. Now let's make a pot sticker. Now, listen. You can choose to make these round if you want to. I'll show you.
I think it's a little bit wasteful. But do half moon of the water. No, that's too much meat. Okay. Okay. Now, if you want this to look like a pot sticker, you're going to fold. And fold and fold and then you're going to fold oops I have to turn it around the other direction it takes a little time and if you don't want to do it this way you don't have to but this is the traditional style when you get it at the Chinese restaurant that's what it looks like We'll have years and years of practice of doing them. Exactly, and I don't. But that looks pretty darn close, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you're just going to set those on your cookie sheet, kind of smoosh them down so they're flat, and squeeze them. See, here. When you put them down, make sure you squeeze them closed, and then they'll be a little flat on the bottom. Let's make another one. I'll make another one round. Like I said, you can buy these round. I just didn't see any when I went to the store today. Half moon water. And then we take a little bit of our meat mixture. In the center. Fold it over. And we start at the end here. We fold. Well, see. like that. And they don't have to be perfect. What I'm going to do now, because this is going to take me a little while, is I'm going to go and I'm going to make these up and then I'm going to come back and show you how we cook them. We are ready to move forward. I have made all of these pot stickers. I made the wontons, which I didn't show you, but here they are. They're in my soup. They're cooking away. I've got a whole bunch of wontons in my soup. And the meatballs you see in there are some leftover filling I turned into meatballs and threw them in the soup because I didn't want to waste it. So now we've got some nice Asian chicken soup with wontons um, for, you know, a good long time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stick these. I have about two tablespoons of oil in this pan. And it's heating over a medium high heat right now. Hmm? I'm gonna cook these in the oil. Just like that. Okay, we've got the little pans worth over there. We're going to cook these for two minutes or so until they're brown on the bottom. That's not going to take very long because you see, look, that's already starting to get blistered. I'm going to get out my tongs. And I'm also going to get a little bit of water about a half a cup of water I have standing by they're almost ready 
you want them all to be about the same so and I'm gonna stay with you so that I can show you exactly at what point the other thing you must have a frying pan with a lid or a lid that fits the frying pan that you're going to use because you are absolutely going to have to have a lid in order to finish steaming these dumplings we're going to get these nice and brown on the bottom we're almost there you don't want to do it too fast the steaming is what's going to cook the meat on the inside so you don't want to skip that part you don't want to eat raw pork now the other thing I did want to mention you don't have to use pork you can use whoopsie you can use ground turkey ground chicken ground beef uh, whatever type of meat you prefer you can this one, That's the first thing this one? Yeah, next one. these are almost there see mm -hmm. that's just about where you want them and we're all we're all getting brown and happy okay yeah we're almost there is what you're gonna want to do And I don't want to go too soon because I want all of these to be nicely browned. I know, but they're in the center of the pan, so that's like the hot spot. These are just about perfect. Oops. Don't you want them to stand up on their bottoms? You don't want them to turn over on their sides. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. I put this right in there. And put the lid on and don't take the lid off for five minutes leave this going for five minutes and don't open the pan until it's done all that water is going to evaporate off now while that's cooking let's make some dipping sauce okay now I know how bad this is going to sound, but I usually eyeball this, so sorry. I'm going to get a green onion. Now when you go to the restaurant and you get the, the pot stickers, you get this lovely lovely sauce to dip them in and every place makes theirs a little bit different you can get one that has that has like an oyster sauce base and some um, chili paste in it or some hot and sour hot sweet and sweet and hot sweet and hot chili sauce um, you can do a hoisin sauce as a base. Um, I'm just going to go with what I have done for years. We're going to use some soy sauce, some water, some sesame oil, some rice vinegar, some green onion, some garlic, some white sugar. We're going to mix in there, which I have to get out. The, and then we're going to put some of this... Um, sweet and sour sauce in the mix and this is something um, the Chinese restaurant that we favorite here um, makes fabulous pot stickers and I never measure I'm gonna estimate what I have here is probably about two tablespoons of soy half a teaspoon of sesame oil about two tablespoons also of rice wine vinegar this is seasoned it doesn't have to be about a half a cup of water let's see let me get the sugar And if Rick can come over here and put his camera on, on the lid, and I just want to show you what that looks like 
is very close to what you would order in a Chinese restaurant. Now back to the sauce. <laughs> I say about a teaspoon of sugar. Mix it in there really well. It smells fabulous. I'm going to put about that much garlic in there. You can use garlic powder, it doesn't matter. We're going to put our green onion in here. And yes, the green onion is what makes all the difference. I have to tell you, when I make this and I don't have any green onion, And just, I put about, I'd say about a tablespoon of that sauce. Oh, that's yummy. Is it? Mmm. That's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is really the secret to me. When you mix all these things together, you still need that little bit of sugar in there, even though you're using that sweet and sour sauce, but there's just something about this. And I, honestly, I just figured this out like a week ago because I had, this is a funny story. We had a bag of frozen pot stickers in our freezer. And honestly, I don't know how long they had been there. Molly pulled them out. She saw them and she just had to make them. We burned them. She kept asking me, do you think they're done? Do you think they're done? And I kept saying, yeah, they just have another minute. And I came... I, I walked toward the stove and I went, oh, I burned them. We have 20 seconds left on the timer. So you know the only solution for burned pot stickers? Take out. So I had already made my own sauce, but it didn't taste quite right. When I got the sauce from the restaurant, I realized it was a little pink. I had a little pink tinge to it. So I thought, oh, because at the time we had also ordered some crab rangoon. It was like an afternoon snack. And I t put some of that sweet and sour sauce in there and that was the ticket okay here we go look at that can we get a plate let me turn down the heat a bit look at that oh my goodness see beautiful and they are sticky. I don't want to make these if you just clean your kitchen. Yeah, they're going to be messy. And, you know, these don't take as long as you might think. They do take a little planning, and they do take a little time to put together. But if you want to make your own, I'd say they're way cheaper than takeout. All right. So I'm going to actually go, and I'm going to finish this batch up, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to fix you a plate with pot stickers and wonton soup. So we'll be back. Our pot stickers are finished and delicious, I have to tell you. This is really hot because I just took out the pan. Look at the bottoms. They're crispy and fabulous. Look at This is one of the cooled off ones. And I, you dip it in this sauce. And I have to tell you, it is fantastic. Here, babe. Mm, wow. Mm-hmm. They are yummy. Mm -hmm. And I just made a plate full. In an order at the Chinese restaurant, you usually get... Eight. No, you don't. I think. You do, get do you get eight? About that. Okay. Well, you've made a lot more than eight. Plus, I made what we made into wontons. So, there you have it. Trey and Abby's mom. I hope this helps. I hope you try this. I hope you love it. I hope it's delicious, and I hope you find it just as easy. And I hope you found the, rest of the recipe video extremely helpful. So, I hope you try it. I hope you love it. And if you like what you see, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you.